All right, the session is now being recorded, and today is Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020. 2020 is almost over, everyone. Thank goodness, right? And uh, we are going to uh, dive into a Jirapalooza in just a moment, but um, first I wanted to open up and see if anyone has any announcements for us. Um, hi, everybody. I um, I don't have any major announcements. Um, you probably already saw the um, the YouTube um, videos that are up from the, the conference a few weeks ago. So those are available if you haven't caught them. Um, and uh, I can put the link in the Etherpad. I didn't have it prepared. Um, as far as releases go, um, I know on the core team call yesterday, um, they were uh, talking about potentially um, doing a 20.2 in December and um, it may be even a 19.6 before the end of this year as well. Um, it looks like the uh, 21 release might get pushed to January just because of QA availability. So that's the latest on the timeline. But all of that is still kind of very fluid because, as you know, it all sort of depends on QA and the, the types of bugs that are found and how quickly they can be addressed. So um, just a heads up for anybody kind of tracking the, the release schedules. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for me. Thanks, Mama. Anybody else? Anyone else have a announcement to make? I think we're ready to dive into our Jurapalooza. So I will um, share my screen. Give me just a second. Okay, so the first um, JIRA on our list appears to be SAC 44446. And I that is on our Etherpad. I've pasted the link to Etherpad in the chat, but I can also paste URL into the chat for any of you who are just looking at that. And I'm sharing uh, my screen. Let me see if I can have it share uh, the page I want. So this is one I put on there, I think. Yes, I believe you're right, Tiffany. So do you want to? Sure. So. Um... The, when, a, when a test is auto-submitted in tests and quizzes, the total scores page for the, um, the submit date uh, column shows you, or shows the instructor, the last date uh, and time stamp when a student saved their work in the test. Because essentially for auto-submit, what matters is the last save date uh, with respect to you know, what work the student completed. Um, you know, what, what actually got submitted. So the submit date column in total scores has always said, um, you know, the time the student last saved. But the event log submit date shows the actual, um, showed, I should say, until SAC 44320 went in, showed the actual date when the automatic submission occurred. And that's very important because we've gotten multiple uh, comments from instructors recently and students recently at UVA who have said that, uh, who have claimed that auto submit has prematurely submitted their work, seeing that submit date and total scores uh, being the last save date. We actually had to change our email template uh, for auto submit so that it says last save date in the email instead of submit date because students were confused about this. Um, so now SAC 44320 changed the submit date in the event log to no longer display the real submit date from the auto submit, but now to show the uh, last save date. 
And it's erroneous because it's not actually when the automatic submission occurred. And the instructor will complain to us, I'm sure, if they see that <laughs> happen uh, and never get the real automatic submission date uh, in the event log. So I'm proposing in um, 44446 to revert the change from 44320 because I think this is a very bad change. Was 44320, was that the only thing it did? Yes. Oh. It changed the submit date in the event log to show, to be consistent with total scores, to show the false submit date, in fact, to show the, the date of last save. And so 44446, I'm suggesting that we revert it, but if the behavior of 44320 i.e. to show last save date in the event log is desirable. We need to add a new column in the event log that says last saved for all tests and just show the last save date for, for whatever test it is, whether auto submit or otherwise. Of course, in any other submission manual or timer, it will be the exact same date as the submit date. Well, I guess the question, this begs the question, what, what do instructors want to see? My guess is they want to see the actual time of submission. Yeah, and that's what I think too. And I think that, uh, that 44320 was a bad change because of that. Because we've gotten, like I said, we've gotten multiple complaints from instructors who suggest that the student's work has been prematurely submitted um, when now it, it's a reasonable thing to show them the last save date because that's when the student's work actually got, that's what actually got submitted, right? So it's it's a reasonable date to have in total scores because that's when the student saved their work and that's what got done in the submission. But mm -hmm. it's not reasonable to have it in the event log because the event log tells you the actual dates when things occurred, <laughs> if that well, makes sense. At least, at least that's how it's labeled. So yeah. the labeling, yeah. Yeah, so either we add another column and relabel things to to match their correct data that's being presented, or we change, we revert that change back. Exactly. So, what do what do folks think about this? Any any agreement or concerns about reverting it back? I, I would agree. We've had some similar things about the dates seem to be, dis it seems like a discrepancy in dates um, as far as when the students have submitted and it's confusing. Mm -hmm. I see Heather's typing something in chat. Let's see what she's adding. And Sean, let's see, Heather, I haven't heard anything about this from instructors here, but I wouldn't mind heading off potential problems. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I and I feel like uh, 44320 was introduced to improve consistency, but without asking any instructors what they actually thought. It sounds like we pretty much have consensus that um, we want the actual time of submission to appear in the event log. Okay, great. I will put a comment in here to that effect. How do you spell consensus? Did I get it right? <laughs> I think I did. Uh, I think it's C O N. No, I didn't. S U S. Yeah, it is S E N S U S. Okay.
Okay. Great, thanks everybody. I think the next one is 40680. Is that? <clears throat> so I don't know. Let me see if I have to. Let me see if I can get this to just share my Chrome. I don't can't have to keep. All right. Joinable groups cannot join locked group from a site. And Tiffany, I do believe your name is next to this one as well. Yeah. Um, so actually, the core team um, discussed this and um, and agreed that um, the need for locking assignments or locking group modification uh, with assignments is is a problem. Um, so I guess they're they're actually going to be addressing this differently. Um, but uh, the initial proposal was to prevent joinable groups from being assigned to an assi a group assignment because um, the group locking, which was a bad implementation in my opinion in the first place, um, would prevent them from joining the group. And there are a lot of good reasons to have students be able to join a group and then do an assignment with it, you know, with the group that they've chosen. Uh, so um, I thought that this was not a good uh, way to move forward with this and, um, and it should be changed. So you created 44605? Yeah, I created 44605 because one of the um, the concerns uh, about from instructors about um, creating additional groups for multiple assignments is that they have um, massive numbers of groups. So like if you have, let's say, a large class of you know 100 students and you want groups of two, uh, then you've got 50 groups for each assignment, right? Um, so uh, those instructors are just overwhelmed by the number of groups in the group mm -hmm. page. Mm -hmm. um, so 44605 is a, pre, um, a proposal to add some feature to sort of hide or archive those older groups from previous assignments so that uh, the instructor is able to work with the, the groups page, the managed groups page better. Okay, so is there any work to be done in this JIRA? It is open, assigned to Earl. Yeah, I think um, the work is to basically undo the group locking. Yeah, we've actually talked about this a little bit on the core team call. And, um, and the group locking was sort of a band-aid to fix another problem, which ended up causing more problems. But um, <laughs> the long-term strategy is to get rid of the locking and just have it manage and handle groups better. Um, so that is the goal. Um, but I don't know, you know exactly where we are as far as development towards that goal. But um, but that is definitely the direction that that is desired. So okay. Pretty yeah, sure, um, I'm pretty sure Earl's not started on that yet. But yeah, that was that's how I remember it as well. Yeah, make uh, you know make the tools more you know more savvy about when there's changes to groups we made. So when the events come past about group modification, you know actually you know update the state of the assignment accordingly rather than the other way around but he's not yeah i know he's not started it yet i know that so yeah. <laughs> all right <clears throat> thank you guys uh, i think we're ready to move on to the new greater interface sort order which is sac four 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 seven three let me see if I can get that shared here. Interface issues and grader. Student drop down sorted by first name. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. <laughs> Not the end of the world, but 
All right. So let's see. I'm not sure who put this on the list, but I know Adam, you had Adam Hauerwas, you added a couple of related heroes to this. Do you want to talk about this in general for us? So I wasn't the person who submitted the initial JIRA, but um, we noticed with the new grader interface that the drop down is alphabetical by first name as opposed to alphabetical by last name. And yet the main assignment interface is alphabetical by last name. So there's a little bit of a dissonance when using the new grader. And um, I did see where there was a potentially related JIRA, which is 44226, that also discusses the new sort order. And I didn't know whether or not there was a general preference for one or the other. I think we can all agree that consistency is a good thing and sorting by last name is probably more useful. Yes. And those JIRAs do look like they're reporting the same thing. And it looks like, Adam, you've identified another JIRA that has fixed this in um, Sakai 21X. And so you're, you're asking here, could this be backported to 20? Seems reasonable. Correct. Yeah, I've set the merge flag on it to tw for 20, so. Thanks. I think I made that fix, so I'll, I'll take a look at that. Awesome. Looks like Earl's is, is the assignee, so maybe coordinate with him. Yep. Yeah, yep. Thanks, we'll Adrian. All right. So there are a couple of sub um, JIRAs, 44226. Um, Oh, that's the one that was our, yeah, got it. That's the one we were just talking about in 225, which is, Adam, what's the tie-in here? So 225 isn't directly related to either of the uh, other two JIRAs reporting the name sort order, but this is another uh, issue with the new grader interface. Um, I have to say faculty love the new grader interface and uh, we're very grateful to have it in, but okay. there are still wrinkles between the old grader and the new grader. Within the old grader, it was possible to filter based on group membership and then after doing the filter, when you would click grade, there would be next and previous buttons. And those next and previous buttons would take you to the next entry in the filtered group. In the, the, in the new grader interface, you can filter by group and then click grade. But the next and previous buttons will take you to the next alphabetical student and not oh. the next student in the filtered in the, group. In the group. And that I can see that could create some holes for faculty to twist their ankles in. Well, in larger classes, we have groups or sections oh, sure. based on the sections that the, the uh, instructor teaches, and they want to grade based on the section. So they want to be able to put a filter and then next through just those students within that section. Gotcha. All right. So let me go in here and um, first I'm going to labels. Yelp reviewed and comment that we agree this needs to it's it's debatable whether this is a feature request or a bug because it is a regression from the old grader. I, I'd say that's a bug. Um the group filter should be obeyed. Uh when you're doing next and previous. 
Right, I, I get this right. So, I mean, if you if you go into the grader, you can select the group actually in the new grader interface. But what you're saying is, if you've selected the group from the original, like um, a, you know, the original submission interface, right? When yes. you go in there, you want that group pre-selected in the grader, and then so that functionality works where you toggle where where you move between users if you've picked the the group in the new grader interface. But so, there should be a ha there should be a handoff. From... Oh yeah, I agree. I agree yeah. entirely. Yeah, yeah. Got I was just a bit confused. Uh, I was thinking, well, maybe it's because nobody's seen the functionality in the new grader because it is in a strange little kind of settings area. But yeah, I understand that. Yeah, so you, you're in the original yeah. interface. You selected a group. You expect that group to be pre-selected when you go in, and when you when you navigate between the, the users, you expect to stay within the group. I get it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Tests and quizzes grading screens do the same thing. So like the view that you set on total scores is maintained across the questions pages um, if you go by question. Yeah, cool, all right, makes sense. Perfect. I love it that you're with us here, Adrian, to help um, ensure that, <laughs> what to hear what we're saying. That's really helpful to have a developer on the call. Thank you. Yeah, so, sorry, I've not I've not been for a while, but I've uh, I've been kind of snowed on with things. But uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, I appreciate it. All right, thanks everyone. We're going to move on to four 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 one seven. Let me find that. Here we go. So short description is not displayed if site description is blank. And I'm not sure who had added this to our agenda. Let's see, did somebody put a name? No. Um, but somehow it's on our list. It, it looks like Bernardo commented that he put it on the agenda. OK, got it. So um, and I don't believe he is on the call, but um, that's OK. We can still talk about it. Uh, I, you know, I don't think there's a lot to talk about. I think it needs to be displayed. So it, I don't know if this is existing behavior because on the site information page now, I don't think the short description, well, the short description does display with a more link under site description. Yeah looking at you know older versions of Sakai so are they saying that that more link is lacking the user enters a short description without also providing a site description like the site info display right right uh, the short description is not displayed on the site information page yeah, there should be a section there. Yeah, so previously, if you had left a null site description, it just repeated the title of the site uh, on the on the main page of the site, the overview page. Um, and so maybe it's just not reading that null properly and repeating that. So it looks like this is just affecting um, 21. So anybody have any evidence that it relates to 20 or 19, or are we just looking at 21 here? And yeah, it's listed as a bug, so it seems like a regression. Terry, um, sorry, I'm, I see your question. What's the rationale for that? What is that that you're referring to? Sorry, I don't know when you posted that exactly oh just a second ago the rationale for um not showing the short information uh the short description i don't i, I don't think seems, we have a rationale for it i think it's just a bug yeah or ah. regression okay my my question would be whether the when the um, site description remains null, if in 21 it now remains null on the overview page, because um, I would think that's a problem too. Um, I, I think if it's null, it still needs to display the site title in there or display something in there. Um, uh, well, that's, I think, out of scope for this particular JIRA. Well, see, that's what I'm wondering if this isn't tied to that, because if they've changed that behavior on the overview page, so it it no longer reads a null as site title. 
um, that might be what's causing this problem. Does that make sense? Mm. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I guess I can, I can ask it in the Jira. I can comment. I think we're in agreement, though, that the short description should display regardless. Yep. Maybe it's just to encourage you to uh, put the effort in and put a nice full description in. <laughs> Try and cheat your way out of it. <laughs> <laughs> or not use it at all. Um, okay, great, Tiffany. Yeah, you can put your question in there as well. Thanks. And then we've got 40851, which is assignments allows students to use rubrics, or no, it's a, I think it's a feature request to allow students to use rubrics for the peer assessment. And let's see, do we have a name beside this? Adrian, all right. Yes, so, right, oh, okay. Yeah, so this, um, so, um, sorry, man, someone's just coming. Thanks. <laughs> Go, 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 go. Child, 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 child intervention there. Um, <laughs> he's bringing my power break for me, so I shouldn't complain. Oh, that. um, right, so this, 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 this feature, right, um, is a feature from um, EDF. Uh, and they've, they've implemented this for um, the uh, Valencia Polytechnic, right? And um, so I've been having uh, a few discussions with some of the developers. I've been... I've actually been kind of like mentoring one of the EDF developers over this the PR for this for this feature. Um, I've got, I've got a, a couple of small you know, concerns about it, um, but what I wanted to do was just kind of present it. I was hoping somebody from um, EDF or Valencia would come on the call, but, but they haven't. Which, that's, that's cool. But so mm -hmm. I just want to get people's opinions on um, on the feature. I think it's a cool feature. Right? So. So basically, mm -hmm. the, the idea of this is that you can um, that a student can can do a self evaluation with a rubric, right, of yeah. their own of their own work type thing, right, and uh, and also um, you can have other students doing evaluations of students with a rubric, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, this is in addition to an instructor rubric. So the instructor rubric is still the same, um, but you can have a self or a, or a, or a peer evaluation with a rubric so the end result is I, I can't i mean i've not got this deployed on my on my local machine so i can't i can't screen share about it but the end result is you, is you the student may well see two rubrics right on on their screen yeah one from the instructor and one from either one of their peers or their own evaluation of, of you know what, what what they think right so you can compare the rubrics and so on yeah um so yeah, it's, it's it's a good idea. It's 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 a good feature. Um, my my, it doesn't work with a new grader. So this is this is this is one thing that I've um, that I've been talk, talking to them about. It's um, so one of the developed Bernardo from EDF says that they could add they could add integration with a new grader for twenty two, right? So mm -hmm. like an, another Jira after this, right? So assuming assuming this Jira goes through, this PR gets merged, right? They'll come back and they'll they'll implement they'll implement this for the new grader for twenty two. Um, another 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 small concern I've got about this as well is that the the peer assess the peer review only applies to the to the to the students and the assignment. Right, not not to their submission. So, in other words, um, if a student submits multiple times to an assignment, you'll never be able to work out the, the way the design currently is whether um, whether a self evaluation or a peer evaluation 
applies to which submission, if you know what I'm saying, because it's yeah. literally just attached to the assignment and the user ID, which was what Valencia were, were quite happy with, right? So I think I think they developed this maybe maybe a year since, you know, and uh, and so Valencia have been using it. And so EDF obviously wanted to come, you know, get uh, get it into master, contribute it back. Um, maybe I've been overthinking it, so that's why that's yeah. why I've brought it to TNL, right? That's that's mm -hmm. that's you know. So I know there's there's jiras out there around uh, looking at the full assignment history, right? Right. You know, being able to being able to see each submission, right? So maybe down the line, people are going to say, "Well, I also want to see what the peer rubric was for each submission as well," right? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know what I mean? And the way it's designed at the minute, it, it won't do that. It doesn't. It so, yeah. So right now, there are a couple of problems that our instructors have found with peer assessment. One of them, specifically, being that you cannot have a student resubmit and then do a second peer assessment. Um, in fact, allowing resubmissions beyond the peer assessment start date um, causes the peer assessment randomization of, you know, selection of, uh, of peers to do the reviewing uh, to fail. Um, so, so I guess, I mean, that's, that seems to be a larger problem with the peer assessment feature in general, that it already doesn't support resubmissions. Uh, so then the second question is, do students even get to use the new grader UI for doing peer assessment yet? Because if they can't, then I guess that wouldn't be a problem that new grader doesn't support it, right? Yeah. So, so if students can't use new grader at all for doing peer assessment, I don't think new grader needs to be considered yet for this uh, until they, they can use that. Um, or, or was the intention there, Adrian, to allow the instructor then to use the new grader to pull in sort of a, a uh, an overall grade from the peer assessments? I don't think so. I don't think okay. that. Okay, you from your thinking that it was to allow the students to use the new grader with the... Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that that's another problem our instructors have had uh, just with the old grading format is they can't see the peer reviews while they're doing their grading of it. So that I mean that's another component of peer assessments failures um, mm -hmm. that would need to be addressed, I think separately. Um, so yeah. I don't know that this that this feature is creating any new regressions. I think it's just perhaps calling, you know, developing it is perhaps calling attention to the existing issues uh, with peer assessment and and the instructor's inability to see that content um, submitted by the reviewers during their grading process. Right. Okay. That's interesting, right? Thanks. So. Okay, so it sounds to me that the um, integration with a new grader, right? That that can wait, right? We can we can we can put that off. That mm -hmm. that shouldn't be a blocker for this, right? So, mm -hmm. so so my next question is going back to going back to um, this. This is literally a question of a database column, right? So like um, with the rubrics, what you have is a column called the evaluated item ID, right? So currently, that is the submission ID. If in the case of an assignment, the assignments tool, that is the submission ID, right? So, at the moment, you could have a, a rubric evaluation for each submission from the student, right, by the instructor. Yeah. So, my 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 kind of concern is that if we don't, if we use the student's user ID, right as the evaluated item, then down the line, if people do want to see, you know, you know, the kind of the, the kind of peer rubrics against each submission, they won't be able to because of a decision we make now around what goes in that column. Mm -hmm. People do people understand what I'm saying there. Is that is that does that make any sense? I'm having a I'm personally having a little bit of a hard time kind of trying to visualize what that means. Um, but, okay, so so if so but so basically if you have an assignment and a student submits to the assignment, 
and uh, let's just say this the student submits three times right and you want to look at the history of that assignment in other words you want to look at all the submissions for that assignment mm -hmm. at the moment it would be possible to be able to see the rubric evaluations as well for each of those submissions so that first submission may have a totally different you know rubric you know the, the rubric rating to to their third submission but you'd be able to you would have the data now as things stand to be able to look to be able to attach each of those rubric evaluations to the, to the correct submission and, and see it later on type thing yeah um that's important to con continue to have that functionality yeah well, well, well we will do it with even with this change we will but this okay. the idea of this self the self or the peer assessment is that it's not the submission that's being evaluated by your peer it's you it's your own user id right so mm -hmm. so basically there'll be a mapping between assignment user and peer there won't be a, there won't be an association between peer submission and user so you know. uh, again this goes back to a failure of peer assessment peer assessment currently is a one-to-one -one situation the students get assigned someone to review they do that review there is no resubmission possible there's no re-review possible um, so so i think that this is not creating a new problem but i think that 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 does need to be addressed because instructors do want students to be able to redo reviews or do a new review post initial review you know with a resubmission and so on um but i think that's a separate feature request entirely because the ability to have iterative peer reviews does not exist right now yeah right okay so Casting that in a in a more um, in a in a kind of a more more of a maintenance kind of like kind of like um, lens type thing. If we did make those changes later on, right, and we wanted to now start tying peer reviews to the actual submission, we'd have to do some kind of database update later on with current Sakai installations. And probably we'd probably end up having to guess which which submission those peer assessments should be attached to later. Well, if it's a one to one um, attachment right now, there wouldn't be multiple submissions, I don't think. I mean, again, the the peer review breaks if you allow resubmission. Uh, but um, I guess, yeah, I guess in this case, if if the instructor has done the grading, then there could be potentially a resubmission post peer review. Um, but yeah, I I see where that could be a problem. Uh, but I think if it's going to be addressed, then peer assessment needs to be developed um, better, and and yeah. the problems with it need to be fixed first. Um, and and I think that is a, a separate issue entirely and a separate Jira entirely. Um, so I guess the question is whether we consider all of the problems that exist with peer assessment priority over allowing students to do peer assessment with iter iterative reviews. Right. Okay. So, so I probably have been slightly overthinking it. So that's okay. That's 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 what I wanted to uh, to raise this around. So, it sounds to me like I'll have another look over the PR, and uh, it's probably going to be okay to go in. And what I'll do is I'll raise, I'll definitely raise another Jira straight away about about it working in the new grader. But as you've highlighted there, Tiffany, that that may open a big can of worms anyway, right? Because I don't think at the moment students can do the peer review inside the new grader. So that's probably yeah. something. I'm, yeah, that's probably something I'm going to have to look at anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah, this would be yeah really that's, that's an entirely because right now it was new in uh, Sakai 11 to even let students use the rich text editor, uh, you know, the CK editor for their reviews. Um, initially, students could only enter co text comments uh, for a review. So so it's, it's probably not changed too much um, in the peer yeah. assessment status yet. 
uh, beyond that. Um, so yeah. I think I think the that it would be useful and helpful to open Jira's if they haven't already been opened. I think I might have opened one about the problems with uh, peer assessment and instructors wanting to allow resubmissions. Um, because we've yeah. had that, that problem multiple times uh, so far. In fact, recently I've had two instructors who um, basically broke their, their peer assessment assignment by trying to allow resubmissions on it. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, so, you know, that is obviously a desirable feature and a bug with, with the peer assessment functionality that it doesn't work with resubmissions properly. But, um, yeah, I, I guess that's that's an entirely separate issue than do we want to allow students to use a peer rubric uh, on the on the reviews? Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you, everybody. That's 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 been really useful. Uh, I can now go back to EDF and carry on the conversation. They'll be happy because you know they were they were thinking that I was going to get all dictatorial and stop the talk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I said I'm going to I'm going to present style, it. Adrian. <laughs> Say again, sorry. That is so not your style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks anyway. That was, that, 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 was, that was really useful that. Great. Thanks for bringing it to us. All right, I think that is actually we actually made it through our complete list of Jira's on the list. Um before running out of time. Fantastic. Good work, everyone. Uh, so, yeah, woohoo, Heather, exactly. Our next meeting is on December 16th. Um, it's open right now. It might be another Jira Palooza. Um, so, hopefully, uh, if folks are around that week, I ex hope, expect most of us, well, I'll be around. Um, Charles, will you be around <laughs> to lead that meeting? <laughs> I will be. I should be here. Awesome. So as far as I know, it's going to be another Jira Palooza. So be collecting your Jiras and um, sending them our way to add to, to the list. And uh, that's what we'll do. So anything else anybody wants to bring up before we adjourn? Then I thank everyone for showing up today and helping us um, determine what to do with all of these JIRAs. Uh, great input. And I appreciate your help, you know, as the entire community benefits from our input. So have a wonderful day and look forward to seeing you guys next time. Yeah, cool. See you all. Bye-bye. Mm,